Tell me your name. Are you sick? Ainsley. Are you sick? Horror. Fuck! Jesus! <laughs> oh shit, look. I know, that's what I was, that's what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you, we got a hit. And it was right on, it's right when you said, when I said, are you sick? And you said horror. Maybe this isn't a good idea. Maybe this isn't a good idea. You sure this is a good idea? It all started with a video game. Where are you? Where are you? I'm right behind you. I'm right behind you. Okay. Okay. Oh! During the 2020 pandemic lockdown, I invited my buddy T to join me in Phasmophobia, a heart-elevating ghost-hunting experience from Kinetic Games. What came next was a fan favorite on my Twitch channel, Phasmophobia with the Phil Rossi Scream Team. And sure, we had fun. But as we started to see the end of the pandemic, I got a call from Phil. How would you like to do this for real? And now, here we are, just two dads, living their best life while investigating the afterlife. And welcome back. This is part two of OSI at Crescent SCI. Uh, in part one, we covered Cell Block D and Solitary. Yep. Not necessarily in that order. Uh, actually, I, not in that order at all. No, actually, <laughs> actually not. Um, but we had already been at, at the at the point that we're coming in now. We had already been at Crescent for roughly four or five yeah, hours. Better thereabouts. Yeah. And um, the weather, you're going to hear a lot of the weather in, in some of these in some of these clips. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just to set the stage. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, up next is uh, we're going to be talking about the end of life building, which was the hospice building where inmates, patients, it was, it was there on the campus for many years, right? Mm -hmm. Is where they essentially went to die. Yeah. The tour guide said it best. She said, if you came into this building anytime during your stay at Crescent, you left in a body bag. Yeah, I remember that, and I was like, "Yeah, okay." And well, let's go on ahead. And let's 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 go on ahead and jump in with this uh, this first moment. And even before we jump in, okay, just <laughs> to set this scene because I'm not sure. Welcome to Old Spirits, everybody. <laughs> I'm not sure if you remember this. We are, we came back from the break and we were packed up and we head out. We got lost. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We got completely totally lost and that. turned around. So we're lost. We're walking around God. in the fog, God. in the rain, oh, and we finally kind of got ourselves oriented. Yeah. And this is the one building that I really remember just looming up out of the fog. And it was, I yeah. mean, I feel like our pace slowed down a little bit as we approached this building. Let's, let's take a look at this first clip and well, I think I think it pretty much sums up the vibe. Right. It pretty much sums up the vibe. We mumbled a lot. In, in, in the whispered. hospice. <laughs> Mumbled and whispered <laughs> quite a bit. Yeah, we'll talk about why. Mm -hmm. Don't be shy. We love to know that you're here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
is a great summary of the vibe of the hospice. And I should mention, there's going to be some language in this episode. I'm just going to throw it out there because, man, in the hospice, you could hear it in our voices. We were terrified. <laughs> it was it was unnerving. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. just... I can't say that I was terrified at every moment i was <laughs> but, and there was and as i was reviewing the audio and i'd forgotten about this there was a period of you know a couple minutes where you just kept apologizing oh me. yeah and i yeah, said no i said yeah. look where you are you know, i said look where you are <laughs> right right and right, right. um but it was especially this floor in particular was just had this weight to it i can't say that i felt I didn't feel threatened in any way while we were there. No, no. Threatened is not the right word, but it, there was just this heaviness. It was so heavy. and It, it, was, just... it was very oppressive. It, it also felt hopeless. Yeah. That's a great word. That's a great word. And I'll say also, too, just to draw you know, a parallel to being a kid, at my parents' house, we had a long hallway. <laughs> and at night, I would be terrified to walk down that hallway because mm -hmm. there were doorways off the hallway and right. those rooms would be dark and this kind of really... <laughs> was that same kind of feeling of when you're walking down that hallway in the dark. Because if you remember, I forgot to turn on my camera at first. I said, I need to go turn the camera on. And he said, do you want me to walk down that hallway with you? Yeah. And I said, yes. Yes. <laughs> and, and I think we'll find out why that was a good idea. Yeah, exactly. In our time at the hospice, we have some salty language. Uh, we have uh, some mumbling. There's going to be a lot of unintelligible there. And I, before we get on to the next clip, I, I think it's important to note that. Like, this is probably the quietest I've ever seen you in our entire relationship. <laughs> and you know what? Right now, <laughs> mom, stop nodding your head. I know you're nodding your head right now. You stop that. Stop, mom. Stop. I know he's right. Let's go to the next clip. <laughs> you don't have to stop. We're very open. This was when we were going to, to turn my camera to turn, to turn hit, your camera to hit record. Right. This is your POV camera, right? Yep. No. Hearing it again outside of this, my studio and reviewing it and hearing it through the headphones or on my speakers at home, then when I come over here. And I listened to it again. Yeah. <laughs> and watching the video up on the screen there, I'm kind of at a loss for words a little bit. <laughs> so the corridor that we're in, this particular corridor is, uh, it's on the first floor, if I remember correctly, because we go yeah. up later to the second floor, Correct. I remember. Correct. But this was the first floor, uh, and some of the rooms were still in pretty decent condition. Some of them were in horrible condition. Uh, and and you know you can hear you can hear the condition of the building it's 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 falling falling apart around us <laughs> but that corridor it was it was straight out of the shining it was just it it just felt like whenever we had to walk to but I, and I remember too we didn't go anywhere alone no in this no building. we didn't we did not we stuck together like glue.
Is that you whispering? It always flips me out when that yeah. happens. It yeah. always flips me out when that happens. Yep. I think that was my reaction to the motion alarm. Yes. <laughs> Actually, I believe that was the REM pod. It was the that REM was pod. The REM pod. Yeah, we had we had you. Now you had motion alarms set up in here, but yeah. you also had the REM pod. REM going. pod was in one of the rooms. Yeah. Uh, but that help, I I heard that. Mm -hmm. And I remember hearing. I I didn't hear help necessarily, but I heard a whisper. Yeah. And as you can tell by my reaction there, and again. You always wonder, it was in my imagination, was I hearing things? And when you go back and re review the audio and you actually hear that sound that you thought you heard at the time. When you get that corroboration, it, it is a little unsettling. Yeah. It is a little unsettling. There's, a lot, there's excitement, yeah. but then, yeah. again, no matter how often we do this, you always kind of find yourself just really questioning what the F is going on. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, think, I think it's healthy. I think it's healthy that you do that. Um, the other thing I remember about, about the hospice was that the rooms, they were all identical to one another. Well, some were in more disarray than others, but I was astounded at how different every room felt. There were some rooms we just went in and I just felt absolutely nothing. And there were yeah. other rooms that we would walk into, and that's why I think I'm so on edge there. There were some rooms that I'm like, can we get out of this room now? And I... Yeah, there were, yeah that's an absolute accurate statement that some of the rooms had a definite feeling to them. Each one. And then some rooms you just felt like you were just walking into a, a, a dilapidated room. A yeah. dilapidated old yeah. building. And while I would say that, that yeah, there was, you, you're also going to hear in this video, you're going to hear a lot of the weather, like you said, you know, the fog was a little heavier, it was starting to rain a little harder, <laughs> and, and that, that comes through both here and at, and at the administration building. But we still managed to capture quite, quite, a, quite a few, quite a few of the uh, of the former tenants. I think. Uh, I don't think so. I like I didn't notice it. To be honest with you. Dance, teeth, installation, Dance. instructions. It's <laughs> like I'm a false. I'm amazed we didn't hear that. Yeah, that was right next to us. Yeah, that was right next to us. And you know, I will, I will say this too, don't, and we've said this before, but don't discount sections of your audio where you're having a conversation because those EVPs can and do and will sneak in and you might miss something like Don't or some of the others that we've had that have been there within our, over our chatter. There were some clips that I was playing them over and over and over again and going, okay, is that me or mm -hmm. is that Phil? Is that mm -hmm. me or mm -hmm. is that Phil? And I do believe we have a, a clip in here uh, coming up uh, next, as mm -hmm. a matter of fact, where I'm in the middle of the conversation, I'm in the middle of talking to you, and, and a, a, a voice or sound comes right in underneath. And there, were, there was one that I thought was an EVP, and went back to two different audio sources, and I'm like, okay, that was actually me. Okay. And, and, but that's, and you kind of breathe a sigh of relief like, almost. I think I'm okay with yeah. that. <laughs> so, I, this might be the one. Uh, let's, 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 let's watch this one. It's one of those reinforced showers. Hmm. <clears throat> I believe this is for above. Yeah, it's it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This yeah. And you can you can just hear you can just hear the tension in our voices. Well, but, and you that's, really can. man, I must have listened to that sound like a dozen times, trying to figure out what it was saying. What? Well, just what the hell it was. Yeah. Trying to basically determine is that the wind? Is that the weather? Is that debris? And and I I couldn't pin any of those explanations on it other than it was a freaky ass sound that defied any rational explanation other than to me, it sounded like a scream or some kind of a wail. Not a good, not a, not a positive sound. We now get to probably the, the well, one of the longer clips of the night, one of the longer clips of this episode, and one of the more intense moments of the night. Mm -hmm. So Phil, please to explain, what is the Estes Method? So the Estes Method uh, utilizes spirit box, a blindfold and a set of headphones. 
Now, this is not the punchline coming up for a joke here. <laughs> Essentially, except it, for saying there's no way this will end badly. Yeah. To basically eliminate uh, suggestion on the part of the question answer right. to the person listening to the spirit box, right? So you're putting headphones on, so only the person under the spirit box is hearing the spirit box. They can't hear the person asking the questions. They can't see the person. So it's supposed to unbias the person listening right. to the spirit box, essentially. Uh, Carl Pfeiffer from Ghost Hunters Academy, Ghost Hunters International, and Connor Randall of Hellier uh, came up with this uh, while they were doing the residency at the Stanley Hotel. It's named after Estes Park, which is where the Stanley Hotel is located. A little trivia for you. So um, that is what we're gonna be doing here. Now, one of the things you'll notice that the there are some parts of the video that are a little choppy. This was taken from the stream, the live stream that I was doing of uh, our time at Crescent. And yeah, this was this was one of the more, I, I wanted to do a, an Estes method, an Estes session at Crescent and shocker, we never got around, we never to, got it. around to it. But we, we got this one and I think the, I think the clips uh, speaks for itself. Buckle up everybody, here we go. Uh, well, before you tap me <laughs> Right, right, right. Expect that Should a lot. I, um, the, the, right, right, right. Are we doing? Oh, never mind. <laughs> God, I am. I am feeding myself on yeah. adrenaline in this yeah. clip. And there you see the choppiness from the stream because mm -hmm. this is from a broadcast yeah, I know. from the basement I know, right? of a haunted hospice. <laughs> no, right, no, right. this was on the main floor. floor. This is the first floor this of a haunted this hospice. Is the, yeah. Either way. Yeah. <laughs> And if the footage seems familiar to you at any time, I use this for the teaser. Yeah. When uh, when we were about to go live with Old Spirits. So what Phil's doing is Phil is uh, starting up a spirit box special session. You're nervous. Oh, just wait. Just wait. And as he's starting up a spirit box, Phil, Phil, Phil. What? <laughs> what? Sorry about that. I, I am still flipping out about that. Yeah. That's on me. So there's a lot going on there. Yeah, there's a hell of a lot going on there. Okay. When REM pod's going on. REM pod's going on. Spirit Box is calling out your Spirit name. Spirit Box is calling out my name. And you're about to go under for an Estes session. And I'm going under again. Sure. All right. Okay. So what Phil is doing is he's doing a Spirit Box session, but he's blindfolding himself. He's putting headphones on. So it's basically And watch behind me right? because Simon is behind me yeah. when you're looking at uh, Phil's POV. Tell me your name. Are you sick? Are you sick? Horror. Fuck! Jesus! <laughs> oh shit, look. I know, that's what I was, yeah. that's what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you, we got a hit. I, I, want, I want you to it was right on, It's right when you said, when I said, are you sick? And you said horror. <laughs> Maybe this isn't a good idea. <laughs> Maybe this isn't a good idea. Are you sure this is a good idea? A little longer. I'm going to switch a... This is a little longer. This is a little longer. I just got to go a little longer. I'm switching to Kiss you in my mind. Nick, you got to cut me. I'll try it again. I'll try it again. I can't do much longer, though. All right. All right, Phil. At the most, I'm going to do five questions. At the most. Okay. All right? Okay. Just wanted to give you an idea. Let me start. Let me start this week. Okay. That okay did not sound very convinced. I'm going under. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Why are you here? What is your name? Spirit. Why won't you let go?
Are you in pain? Yes. Stop. Okay. All right. <laughs> Didn't even All hesitate. Right. Yeah. But take a look at that. That was the Estes method that we did in the hospice. And part of me is almost relieved that we didn't do, <laughs> if we didn't do one in solitary or if we didn't do one in, in the admin building because just based on those answers alone. I got to tell you too, watching it back here mm -hmm. just brought about a lot of just weird feelings for me and what, kind of. What, what, what were the feelings? What were, you, what were you going through in that moment? When I checked back in, you know, when I went back under, I just started feeling very just kind of out of it. Um, I was hearing, you know, there were weird sounds coming through the spirit box, things I couldn't articulate. Some right, weird right. kind of disturbing sounds. And then the, there were the voices. But it felt like I was under for a very long time. I felt like there were people kind of around me, like not just you, but I felt... A, like people were behind me and it became difficult to distinguish if I was hearing the words come through the spirit box mm -hmm. or if they were just coming to me. And if you watch at the very end of that video there, you can tell I look out of it. I honestly, watching that back, I feel a little, I do feel a little spooked right now. I'm not <laughs> exaggerating, I feel a little spooked. Well, I mean, when you look at the answers, I mean, the answers are, 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 are just chilling. But that was how intense the, uh, the hospice was. Um, it did not want us to leave. No. And, and I, I can't remember if it was here or if it was at the beginning of the session, but the reason why the two uh, other paranormal investigators left, that happened to me. Yes. Um, I don't know if it happened to you, but, but I was wearing the, as, as, as you saw in the clips, mm -hmm. I was wearing a, a, a hooded uh, raincoat. And at one point I walked out and I felt something tug on my on yeah my you were you were coming up the hallway and yeah. you said to me is there is there something on phil is there something on my head is there yeah. something on my head and well there wasn't right I, like check for like a, a water drop and yeah. danger yeah. on the head but no nope. nothing and unfortunately that type of thing that is what you would call a personal experience yeah. and i will say this in that spot is where one of those female yeah. investigators was touched and i believe that someone at west virginia had also been had a similar experience and that's kind of hard to capture in you know it's it's like when you capture like a phantom smell right. you know you just have to sort of convey it on yeah. on 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 video but and, yeah and to that point too I will say for me as you know we're both storytellers right. and it's that all, that subjective experience that's your ghost story and and it's again it's a it's a different it's a different beast than sharing an EVP or yes sharing video it's it's the it's the it's the, the sharing person, that personal, the personal experience the personal experience is the stuff you talk about around the campfire yes you know the stuff yes. that the stuff that yeah it happened to me or it was conveyed to me but you don't have it on evidence right. and that's the difference between a ghost story and a paranormal investigation absolutely um both, so both of which i love yeah yeah okay. and I, I mean i'm tumbling down this rabbit hole with you mm -hmm. as well so we're we're um we're wrapping things up at the hospice. We leave the hospice and it was like a weight was lifted. I mean, I just yeah. remember it was still foggy, it was still dreary, it was still it was still wet, but man, that fresh air felt so yeah. damn good because oh, yeah. we were out of that. Yeah, I felt like I was coming out of a, of a submarine. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And now we get to what was our last stop as a as a solo team, right. which was administration. Admin building, mm -hmm. oldest building on the campus. This was the first building that was part of the TB ward. And this was the one, if I remember correctly, that had the Tudor styling to it. It had the yeah. gargoyles. It had the mm -hmm. the crests. We we talked yeah. about it in the uh, in the history segment yes. in part one, yeah. right? So it has that look. It was also where uh, the children were. Mm -hmm. uh, the kitchen area, in particular, when they didn't have enough beds was from what I remember from our guides uh, from I think it's Dark Hollow Paranormal told us that children were actually kept 
in the kitchen. That's where they yeah. stayed. They had they there was a point where there was some mm-hmm. overflow, so they had some of the mm-hmm. kids there, and they were literally like, like behind when in that in that mm-hmm. final room where we were standing in the admin building, mm-hmm. they were like the kitchen was right there, and they were like literally handing food over to the yeah. kids. Yeah, yeah, and there were stories that they kept some of the more sick children mm-hmm. down in the basement in the laundry area, mm-hmm. uh, but you could, I mean, it was clearly an old building right and it still had a lot of those characteristics that you see when you see the older sanatoriums so one of the things i want to i want to focus on at least with this clip that we're about to see is you've heard us talk about in part one the importance of redundancies and that's why we talk about where where we bring in multiple cameras Mm -hmm. and we bring in multiple Mm -hmm. recorders and and all that and we 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 touch on it in in part one it's Funnily enough, we talk about redundancy yeah. redundantly uh, yeah. because and it's that, so important. And, and it is important because you know, when you're starting off, you may not have the budget for that sort of thing. Right. But you get the redundancy if if you remember from that very first uh, that very first five minute paranormal we did. The redundancy is in the video camera and the digital recorder because you've now got two sources of of yeah. of, uh, of of things to to pull from. And I bring that up because. You sent me two separate clips when actually it was the same clip, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna let this play and then I'm gonna talk about the the importance of the redundancies. So this is the native audio. Is, is anyone the there? Of your POV cam. Okay. That's why it sounds a little muffled. Right. We'll talk about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was the original clip. Now, I did not realize that was picked up on the POV camera. Yeah. That was the original clip that you sent me with the POV camera. And then I was like, hey, wait a second. I was actually running audio here. So I took that clip, synced it up with my audio from the H4, and this was what I heard. Is anyone there? Got a twofer. Twofer. Got a twofer. Yeah. So and that's, I didn't realize the POV camera picked it up. Right. And, and that was one of those, that was one of those sounds that was nestled in because you don't hear us mm-hmm. talking back and forth because of the quality mm-hmm. of the POV mic. And then on H4N pops, yeah. you know, and pops I, up. I caught that on two audio sources alone. Mm-hmm. Did not realize it was caught in the POV cam. Now let me tell you what makes it particularly haunting that it came through on that POV cam. Let me tell you. Because you also caught it on a third source. Son of a beanbag. <laughs> Is anyone there? All right, so that's my steady cam. Yeah. Clear. And then. A little softer. Yeah, the nose is a little softer there, but this is why the redundancies yeah. matter, because we caught this on three separate yeah. devices, and that murmur, I, I I tried to figure out what it was saying. It, it sounds like I'm here. When I'm hearing it through your speaker now, yeah, it sounds like it's saying I'm here. And all I'm hearing is a hmm. Yeah. It, it, it sounds, sounds like a like child though, to me. It's, it sounds youngish youngish but it does young it, adjacent young adjacent <laughs> young adjacent but it, it sounds like a <clears throat> it sounds like a female's voice but again yeah. this is why when you hear us talk about redundancies this is what we're talking about the value of being able to corroborate it across three separate devices and those were just the devices that i had you said you had there were a couple other clips that i didn't send you because it was the same thing just in lesser quality right but right. what's freaky about that is if you were paying attention the whispering on the POV cam is barely audible. I know. Because that mic is a little pinhole and mm-hmm. it had a sort of a, a case around it. Right. So whatever was saying that had to have been right up right next on to us. me. If, right if, next to us. If sound transmits and all that mm-hmm. is a consideration, it was right up on my business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this was the woodworking room in the admin building. Mm-hmm. 
We, we actually leave the woodworking room, but we left devices running in here. And here's where this clip gets interesting. I have compressed it. This was mm -hmm. originally 10 minutes. This was yes. a 10 minute clip. Yes. But you're gonna see this in roughly three or four minutes. Okay. And what this is, is this is what happened while we were away. And I've documented it all the way up to the point of where we come back. So we've left. And by left, we're still in the building. We're still in the building, yeah. but we're upstairs. Yeah, having other experiences. Ha having another experience, which we're <laughs> gonna be sharing with you in just a moment. That is another long clip, but trust me, worth it. What you don't see is around the corner uh, where, that, uh, where that tripod is with the camera that should be filming uh, Simon, it's failing right. to, to, to film right. Simon's so The flux is right there below, yeah. basically where the edge of that table is. And you can hear it. Now, one of the things you need to know about the flux, uh, we do have a review on it, but the flux not only measures motion, but it measures temperature as well. Mm -hmm. When you hear a long tone, that means that the temperature is dropping, mm -hmm. and if it's a low, low long tone, temperature is dropping. If you hear a high long tone, temperature is rising. And even though I've compressed the time, I do make note of the actual time. And if you're listening to this on the headphones, you'll hear that, the high-pitched hiss. Oh, I'm sorry, no, I forgot. I got that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. And then there was this. And we are the only people in the building. Yes. We are the only people in the building. And I will say this too, and I didn't share the clip with you because I, I didn't have any video to go with it and I had no way to sync it up with any of the video. But and we could sh we'll share this on uh, TikTok. From my H4 that I had positioned at the end of the hall down there, you get a help me. Uh, you hear rattles and banging of like mm -hmm. cabinets in the other room. But the time signatures are how it actually happens in real time. If you're listening on headphones, you might hear a high-pitched hiss. That's just the uh, sped-up time. And I just want to make a comment here that the temperature was steady in yeah. there. Uh, yeah. There was no draft in that room. Very uh, still. It was fairly solid. The walls, and I don't think there were any windows in there. The temperature was constant. We were, you know, we measured it periodically. And then here's where we start coming back. Just as we're about to walk in. Just as we walk in. Hi, hey, we're back. Were you, were you setting off the flux while we were upstairs? I mean, that's five different hits off of the flux, and we're not even there. And and it's it, again very still room. It was I, it was not overly cold in there. No, it was um, it was pretty steady temperature. Yeah, yeah. One thing I wondered watching this, and man, I wish we could be able to time sync it with the audio and video from being up in the kitchen. Wondering if are these responses to, to what, what was we were asking up and what we were doing up there, and we'll what? never know. Well, what a lovely segue! What a lovely segue, okay. Mr. Rossi, because we're gonna wrap up administration with a, a long clip we left the wood circuit uh, uh, the, the, the wood wood shop and we are now up on the main floor mm -hmm. so in that one segment where you saw all the times coming in and all the different uh, reactions from Simon that was when we were up here right and in the kitchen and we were in the kitchen we were in the kitchen main which was also a main receiving area and a multifunction room. It was. <laughs> it was a multifunction room. And this is being shot from a shoulder cam mm -hmm. that you may have seen in some of the other videos that I have. Uh, it's it's attached to my backpack and it's it's a shoulder cam. Um, you're also going to see wisps 
And that's my breath. Yeah. Because it was dark. It was, it dark. was cold. Okay, we shut the lights out now. Maybe you would feel brave enough to go close to that red light over there. If you're with us, can you give us a sign, please? This is my H4 audio, I should say. Okay. My H4N audio. And it's hard to say whether or not that's the Would temperature. Would you like to tell me yeah. your name? Whether yeah. that's the weather outside, because you do sometimes hear the weather howl a bit. Mm -hmm. Again, could be footsteps, could be weather. It was really hard to tell, but what's coming up... What's, what's Are coming you here up, with us yeah, now? What's coming up is um, not so easily explained by the weather. Still couldn't understand why I was hearing music at that time. Do you, Do you like music? Did they play music for you in here? Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. I forgot about that. I'm going to regret those words. I'm not picking up anything on camera. Boy, am I going to Are you on the other side of the room? <laughs> just a little bit closer to the middle of the room. There's that sweet talker, everybody. There's the sweet talker. Yeah, I saw it was moving around that side of the room where I was. I saw, definitely saw the shadow several times. I feel like you're trying very hard to show yourself to us. You can do it. We believe in you. Come a little bit closer. There you are. If you look in the center of the circle, <laughs> I'm like, Phil, tell me you're seeing this. Tell me you're seeing this. <laughs> There's something that looks like a, like a person. Can you come just a little bit closer? Be cool. Please. Be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Oh, oh, I was trying. I, I, I'm amazed the camera. <laughs> Some EVP with video. I love that. <laughs> Maybe come to the red light just, just, just for, for a second. second. God love you, kid. God love you. Gotta get out there. Where are you <laughs> moving over there? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not hiding from us. I, mean, I think you've said that. five words in this like, <laughs> the whole video <laughs> segment here. <laughs> we just want to hear from you. Because I was just I was trying to process this this moment so hard. I was just trying so hard to You're understand what was happening. To scare you cause you harm, disrespect you. I'm amazed you were able to put all of these words together in a sentence because my brain was just like, <laughs> yeah, well. Oh, this one you heard the, uh, yeah, the flux. That was good, that was a complete sentence. <laughs> okay, we gotta turn our lights on and we gotta go. <laughs> Lights come on, it's, it's going to be bright. bright. Yeah. But it's a real pleasure. Yes. Yes. That was a real pleasure. The reason I left it run that little bit was because I wanted to see the light go up against the, uh, the window. Because you see, you see in the clip, mm -hmm. there's a window. There's a skinny window on the door. Mm -hmm. 
And for a moment, I was like, maybe that's what I saw. But then I went back and I watched this again. And I was like, no, there's a shape. There's an actual, there's a head, there's a torso. And I, I was... I was noticing it similar to the to the shadow figure you caught in part one. Yeah, it was doing that lean in, lean out. Lean, but this lean one was in. a little faster. Yeah, it felt like it was a little yeah. faster. But again, it adds up at least to the personal experience I was having mm -hmm. initially seeing a shadow move around on the left side of the room. And I have so, played this clip for so many people, not yeah. giving them any kind of background, just saying, just yeah. tell me what you see. I, I watch it now, and I'm still trying to process it. I'm still trying to process, and I remember showing it to everybody at WVPI, and I was so excited. They're like, well, there's a lot of interference here, T. You're going to have to clean that up. And I think I did okay. Yeah, I think you did all right. <laughs> I think you did all right. So we're changing it up, Phil. We're actually taking a victory lap on camera. Victory because, lap. man, we earned it on this one. Absolutely. Phil, what are you drinking there? It's the Bell's Two Harden. Mm -hmm. And it's delicious. And I'm having a delightful uh, session sour from Dogfish Head Ale House, from Dogfish Head Brewery. This is the uh, Sequench Ale. So, Mazel Tov, cheers, cheers. and uh, yeah, victory lap. Um, normally, we do not have alcohol on the show. I have no idea if that's against terms of service, but who knows? Yes, we'll um, <laughs> but we're going to find out. And, and here's where we talk about the takeaways, but I'm just like, where do we begin? You, you heard me say it in the first one. Uh, this was a boot camp for anybody that really wanted to do this. Here's the thing, though. I don't think since Crescent, I have measured all of our other experiences from like, oh, this wasn't as cool as Crescent. Right. Oh, this wasn't as long as Crescent. Right. You know, I haven't done that. No, 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 certainly not. Uh, because I think, as we've talked about before, every investigation is a different experience. Yeah. And you can't, you can't compare one to the other. At least I cannot. I don't feel like you can. Maybe some people can. I have a hard time. I mean, it's 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 the elements you can. There are elements yeah, you can. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but sure. I mean, there's. I mean, like like when we went away with Ghouly Girls to mm -hmm. to, to Tuckahoe Plantation, that was that was incredibly fun. Uh, when we took Steve Saylor to uh, to the to the Jenny Wade House, mm -hmm. that was ridiculously fun with a great Estes method uh, happening there. And then there's Linville Manor. A lot of this stuff we're going to be. A lot of this stuff is going to happen in season two. Okay, <laughs> just so you know. Let me say this. Here's right. one that uh, West Virginia Paranormal and Dark Hollow Paranormal. Big shout out to them. Big shout out. You guys crushed it. You were incredible hosts. You made us feel extremely comfortable for our first really, <laughs> our first investigation of that length and at a place of that. Without training wheels. Size. Without training, no training, wheels. training wheels. With no training yeah. wheels. With no yeah. training wheels, yeah. yeah. We definitely want to make sure that we work with you all again because this was this was also we couldn't have asked for a better night you to do read it. My mind. You read my mind. It honestly It was perfect. The only thing we perfect. were missing the only thing we were missing was thunder and lightning. Yeah. If it had yeah. been thunder and lightning, yeah. chef's kiss. But, but it was wow. just you you couldn't have asked for a better atmosphere. I have I have a takeaway I want to make sure I show. Oh. Lay it out. Uh drop it down. Bring a spare set of socks <laughs> and hiking boots. Yes. Because man, when I and, and I almost played it as an EVP. When I I actually got on 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 audio, I got me stepping into. You hear my foot go into that puddle, yeah, and it you was hear, a small lake. It oh was my not god! A it, it was, was a small lake. And God love you for your Thomas Hilfiger. Uh, <laughs> oh, they're not Tommy Hilfiger. They're, they're like from Amazon. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, they were Amazon knockoffs. Yeah. Even better, because man, they were lifesavers that night. <laughs> I love those socks. And honestly, I wasn't giving back. In that moment <laughs> where you stepped in the puddle, yeah, like I literally heard the will leave your body. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I've got to give this man a pair of socks because we're not done. <laughs> yeah. So one takeaway. Mm -hmm. Dress accordingly. Yeah. Know your location know well your location. enough yeah. to know how you should be. Check the weather dressing. forecast. Check, Check the, the weather, weather forecast. Check the weather forecast. I got a takeaway. Here's okay. a takeaway. Just <laughs> because it's a on paper a terrifying place, a prison, <laughs> a sanatorium turned mental institution turned yeah. prison. Yeah. 
does not mean that it's a place where evil resides or holds dominion. Because I can't say that I felt threatened at all while we were there. I felt, I felt sadness. I felt you know despair, hopelessness. But I, I never really felt like I was in danger, even when I was doing the Estes. Method. You know, I would, I would have to agree. I didn't feel that that sort of menace or malice, like I did at the, um, at the power plant that's mm -hmm. next to Blackburn. Yeah. Um, definitely, definitely not the same vibe. They're very close to, but not the same vibe as TWA right. at night. Right. There is a lot to learn about pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. You're absolutely right. I was terrified. I was apologizing most of the night. And you, you, you were. You were literally dragging me across the finish line at the end. And I, I felt like after we, after we got caught up on sleep, <laughs> after I passed out in the car, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then, and then I, 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 I processed it. I, I remember Pip was like, so how was it? After I'd slept the whole day. I saw her that night. She said, "How was it?" And I said, "It was, it was, it was amazing. It, it, I felt like, I felt like I now had a grasp of this brand new world ahead of me. Right. And, um, and what an education. And I think the final takeaway has got to be: <laughs> we got all this gear now. We got to go back. That's, that's, that's <laughs> the, that is a good final takeaway." I mean, we want to go back there. Yeah. It is something that we have to do. There's so many possibilities now. Yeah. So many possibilities. And, and I, think, I think I got, uh, having gone through this 12-hour this marathon, uh, now, now I'm like, okay, I have an idea of what to expect. And it may be entirely different. Exactly. It may be entirely different. Which is something to know to expect in and of itself that right. it might be right. an entirely different experience. It very likely will be. Right. But regardless, even if we go back there and not a damn thing happens and we don't record anything, capture anything, it is such an incredible place with so many just echoes of the past, so many stories there that are just worth revisiting. There's just so much to experience just for what this place is without the paranormal part of it at all. And this is where we turn it over to you. For those of you who are paranormal investigators in our audience, we'd like to hear from you. Have you visited Crescent? This is a brand new place. This is a, a brand new territory for people to explore. What have you experienced? We'd love to hear your stories. We'd love for you to follow us on TikTok. We'd love for you to follow us on Instagram. We'd love for you to follow us everywhere where we are on social media and interact with us. We really would love to hear about your experiences and also take your questions. So please make sure to like and subscribe on the channel. And while you're there, go on ahead and drop us a comment, drop us a question, because yes, we will respond and we would love to hear from you. And we would love to talk about it on the camera. So on behalf of us here, take care, stay safe. And we'll see you in the field.